What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. You already know this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Falcons right tackle Caleb McGarry Ooh. in the quote-unquote hot seat, although there won't be a lot of pressure involved with these questions. Um, thanks for joining us. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, first question is, you had a little homecoming game a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. Yep. You, went, you went back to – uh, the Seattle area. You're from mm-hmm. the Pacific Northwest. First time in your professional career that you've gone back. Mm-hmm. What was that experience like? First of all, and did you like find like an old restaurant that like that you liked in college? Did like did you visit any old haunts? Did did you see any family? Like what was the homecoming game like? Well, I mean, first of all, it was awesome getting to play in Seattle again. Uh, you know, and get the win was it, it, like it capped off the week perfectly. Mm-hmm. It was amazing uh, to answer your question yes yes and yes <laughs> uh i mean it was you know getting to run around my old stomping grounds was awesome like the first day i actually choked up a little bit when we went there for practice just Aww. you know going back somewhere that i had spent you know so much time you know energy and just like put so much of myself into mm-hmm. and uh you know i got i was uh, welcomed back so warmly by coaches and a lot of those, those coaches weren't there when i was there you know there's one or maybe two that were but by and large, these guys don't know me personally, and to you know receive that kind of warm welcome was very, very humbling and very appreciated. It was awesome. It was a very good week. That's so nice. I, I love that too, especially because like you're saying, like they don't necessarily know you, yeah. but like to to have that companionship is really nice. Now you also took the offensive line fishing, mm-hmm. but like deep sea fishing, is that correct? Like what type of fishing? Did y'all do? Because you have so, options. Uh, yeah. There. Right. Yeah. No, that's one of the cool things about Pacific Northwest. It's, you know, it's a lot like here in Georgia in the south where we mm-hmm. have, you know, the Atlantic coast and the Pacific Northwest. We have the mm-hmm. Pacific coast. Um, but we went in the north end of the Puget Sound, which it's not really, it's not deep sea fishing, but it's, it's off the coast. You're in, you know, the, it's kind of, it's not really an estuary, but it mm-hmm. kind of is. You know, it's a, it's inlet, this giant inlet of water, essentially, on the other side of the Olympic Peninsula. Mm-hmm. And we went fishing for uh, salmon, coho salmon, uh, a.k.a. silvers. And it was awesome. It was a blast, man. We went with uh, uh, the Outdoor Line uh, Mm -hmm. company. They did an awesome job, man. It was so much fun. It was a blast. I heard y'all also brought fish back to eat, to the hotel to eat. Yep. Was it all good? Like prepared fantastically? They didn't believe me. They didn't believe (laughs) that like real fresh salmon from the Pacific Northwest was different, man. They, They didn't buy it. And I, I think I think I made a believer out of all of them. <laughs> so you had a company, but could you have just been the guide if you felt like it? Like, were you kind of like king fisherman among all of the fishermen that were there? That all, the, day? all the all the offensive no. linemen ahead and brag. It's fine. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't say that at all. I I'd, I've probably fished uh, that well. Certainly uh, that type of fishing I probably have the most experience with out of you know at least the players that were there. Like I yeah. I fished quite a bit you know, living up in uh, the Pacific Northwest, and I fish quite a lot in the off season, mm-hmm. but uh, I certainly don't think I'm quite guide level. You know, I could, <laughs> I could take a buddy or two fishing, you know, <laughs> to a spot that's not too bad and maybe get into a couple, but, you know, we, uh, we hooked, what, 14 fish, I think, 14 or 16 fish total that's that day. That's a good day. day. That was a great day. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself quite, quite at that level, <laughs> but, uh, man, it was, it was awesome. It that's was just a blast. So fun. Who was the best? fishermen out of everybody or at least who caught them yeah most. who Ooh. caught the most that's a better question well, actually. we we kind of took turns as the thing oh, okay. we, uh. we took turns our boat definitely caught more uh, you know, so who was on your boat yeah. so we had a uh, hennessy me uh dolman uh colby gossett and um uh one of the one of the staff with us okay and i think that was all the players mm-hmm. i think that was all the players that was there and then noozle and some of the other staff went to the other boat uh just because there wasn't there wasn't space for everybody on mm-hmm. on one boat, but it was it was a blast. That is fantastic. Now, um, my, the next question that I have for you is actually something that many people have already answered because mm-hmm. if you remember during camp, you know y'all do the question of the day things that's up on the mm-hmm. you know yeah. when y'all walk off practice field, and one of the questions was who would you want to be stranded on a deserted island with? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people said you. <laughs> and so the vast majority. a vast majority of them said you. And I'm just curious, like, what is your pitch to them to, to make them decide, you know what? I'm going to take Caleb McGarry with me to this deserted island. Okay. Well, if you don't want to die, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. That's yeah. the only thing I mean, you need. 
you know, that's I, that's kind of my thing. Is, uh, mm-hmm. is I'm very very outdoorsy. I like the outdoors a lot. And growing up in Washington, you know, Pacific Northwest, I had l- access to just an absurd amount of you know public land and all the space. And so I basically ran wild in my younger years, like, <laughs> like Tarzan. Just it was just unbelievable. My, I drove my mom nuts because I'd come home from school, drop my backpack off at the door, and I'd just disappear. I'd be gone. <laughs> like bye, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Poof, I'm out. Um, Heading to the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Um, or as close as I could get. Right. Uh, so that, that's just what I grew up doing. Like, I'm very big into survival skills, uh, you know, starting fires without matches, things mm-hmm. like that. Like, that's that's what I like to do in my spare time is learn and develop those skills. So that's, you know, I, I would not put myself on a level with any, you know, kind of, you know, survival master, survival instructor, or anything like that. Like, I haven't spent my entire life, you right, know, dedicated yeah. to that you know but i i'm pretty good i th- i think uh, i'd be fine okay that's good to know yeah. and if you're a wild animal and you live in the oregon washington <laughs> region and and they saw you they should probably run well if they don't see me they probably deserve what's coming <laughs> that's a, a great point. i'm a large pale monkey <laughs> <laughs> with very little hair so, <laughs> so they should recognize yeah. that uh, so as somebody who's whose last name is bear I've heard that you've come after my kind a couple of different times that, that, that you have that you've successfully hunted for bear at mm-hmm. this point. Yes. OK, wow. so there are that spawns a thousand questions, mm-hmm. <laughs> which basically just I just want to know about it. Like <laughs> how like, like like do you track them? How do you mm-hmm. you know, like how do you find them? How do you mm-hmm. hunt them? All that type of thing, because mm-hmm. it seems like if you're going after an apex predator, don't miss right <laughs> i mean yeah that's you know um uh, <laughs> um I, I will tell you bear hunting does definitely get your adrenaline up i bet you know because they're a lot of people don't realize they you know they think bears are these large lumbering creatures that are loud and bears are predators people for people mm-hmm. don't realize bears stalk and kill people mm-hmm. like uh, black fast. bears will do it grizzly bears will do it they are yeah bears what i think 30 or 40 miles an hour mm-hmm. and something that i didn't know that i found out because i knew i knew they were dangerous for at least a short period of time like that they could sprint very fast for mm-hmm. at least a short period of time i did not know that they are actually excellent long distance runners hours oh. that oh just doesn't Lord. I know i'm talking hours <laughs> so you're unless you are faster than the bear, you're not outrunning the bear <laughs> <laughs> that so is they're horrible. no they're they're incredible creatures um but as far as like pursuing them it's it's difficult because bears are very temperamental in the sense that you know this bear and i chased one bear for two years once wow uh, one Washington. singular bear yeah, one singular bear uh wow a bear can show up like berry patches mm-hmm. like in washington you can't bait bear um so you have to find them in like berry fields or you know, creek crossings where there's blackberries or blueberries or stuff like that, you know, something, some food source that is, uh, that they like that they're hitting often and pattern them with like a trail cam. Wow. And the annoying thing about bears is, you know, a bear is going to do whatever a bear wants to do whenever they want to do it. <laughs> like they, they can show up at that same spot at the same time, almost like almost to the minute for weeks. And then the three days you get to go there, they're gone. Mm-hmm. They're just gone. Mm-hmm. And then a month later, they show back up. Do the same thing for a week. Disappear for a month. They just, what, whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it. Um, they are incredibly stealthy. When you, you would not expect a, a couple hundred pound animal like that <laughs> to just like appear out of the forest, but they do. Just like, like hello. Wow. <laughs> I, I went hunting uh, in the Clearwater National Forest uh, in Idaho. Uh, mm-hmm. this spring that's where I, I got two bears this spring and it's insane because one moment you're you know you're watching this crossing or the spot you can you can bait in idaho so that's mm-hmm. you know what a lot of people do and it, it works very well usually mm-hmm. um <laughs> i'm glad that you added the little yeah, asterisk yeah, on well, usually. Yeah, that's the thing you know that <laughs> they can show up and then all of a sudden they just don't mm-hmm. you know uh, and um you know they you're, you're watching this pile and you kind of look down or you're reading your book that you're broad and you kind of look up and all of a sudden there's this giant effing blob <laughs> there <laughs> like yeah. there's no twig snap there's no rustle of leaves and it you know it could be you know a hundred yards away which you know really not that far really mm. and they're just all of a sudden they're there scary they, like out of nowhere yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah. it's really cool yeah uh but it's it is crazy wow 
Yeah, they're cool. Don't so, miss. So, yeah, don't miss. <laughs> uh-huh. um, moral of the podcast, don't miss. Don't miss. Um, where do you keep your bears that you have um, so killed? I, have <laughs> I don't know how to ask. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. So I have uh, uh, one of the hides I have here in my house in Georgia, mm. and the other two I'm currently getting processed, uh, tan- tanned out and stuff professionally uh, in Washington. Those will probably be at my place back home in Washington. Okay. Uh, is it like a full like stuffed bear or is it like a bear rug so one of them i'm actually (laughs) having uh made into like a throw slash kind of blanket uh uh, which i'm very excited about that'll be cool (laughs) yeah the the other one uh the big the really big boar i had uh you know he wasn't trophy size or anything but he's a very good sized boar uh had this really beautiful white patch on his chest so i decided to get him mounted so i could kind of show off that really Mm. big pretty white patch wow so one of them is getting stuffed. The other one's being mm-hmm. a blanket. Okay, <laughs> so noted. So are we t- it, it, are we talking like bow hunt? It, it, like mm-hmm. hunting is like a passion of yours. Is it yeah. all different types? I mean, we're, we're talking about bow, mm-hmm. or we're talking about so a bunch of different stuff, or do you just have one area? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm we're fascinated very by fascinated. This. No, yeah. I no love I'm, this. I, I love talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. Um, so I I mean I love hunting in general, but uh, my personal favorite is definitely bow hunting. Okay, uh, cool. It's funny though. So I, I got a like I got a bo- a deer with my bow uh, last week, um, but when I was hunting bear, so I brought my bow and my rifle. Uh, I hunted with my bow for five days. Didn't see any bear, nothing. And bears had been coming through on trail cams regularly, but just for whatever reason, when I was there, they just weren't. And like this is practically bathing in you know, scent killer, stuff like that, you know, yeah. doing everything you can to not, cause bears, bears sense of smell is like unrivaled. You, you can fool their eyes. You can fool the ears. You cannot fool a bear's nose. Huh. If the wind changes, changes on you and goes bad and blows like from your back towards them, it it's over toast. Wow. Abs- and they can be hundreds of yards away. They can be hundreds of yards away and smell you. It's incredible. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I feel they've, like I'm they've survived this long for a reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are an apex predator for but a reason. <laughs> 100, 105 days with my bow, didn't see a single bear. 102 days with my rifle, saw a bear each day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't know where. I don't know where. Wow. So that's wild. That's, that's the thing. My, my favorite is definitely bow hunting, but, you know, I, I love all hunting in general. Mm-hmm. I support all hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- I think uh, I I just have a very deep appreciation and respect for like the more primitive hunting mm-hmm. styles like uh, archery, muzzle loader, you know things like uh-huh. that where you don't have quite you know such a mechanical advantage. I'd say right, yeah. And that's not you know throwing any shade at you know modern firearm hunters because you know they get like two weeks of the year to hunt mm-hmm. as right. opposed to you know archery guys like me who could hunt you know depending on the state basically the entire hunting season. That's like four or five months. Right. You know right. so give and take yeah. hmm, interesting yeah. um on the same line of questioning as uh your weapon of choice heard through the grapevine um in my notes for this it literally just <coughs> says ask about giant ass sword <laughs> now, so what giant ass sword. I, i've heard that you have a <laughs> quote giant ass sword what is it why do you have it and where is it <laughs> so, uh it is in in an undisclosed location okay. no, um, no, no, no. uh so I have always won. I've always been like a medieval arms buff. I love everything sharp, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> straight up from like broadheads and archery to pocket knives, swords, fixed blades. I am, I'm kind of, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a nut. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd always wanted a great sword, but finding, you know, a quality produced great sword in the modern era is very, very difficult. Cause you know, that was like back in the 15th century. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, we've moved on <laughs> a little bit, yeah. a little bit. not a lot of sword makers that, you know, just make, you know, <laughs> six foot swords. <laughs> uh, but I got hold of this, uh, swordsmith in Texas, uh, called Valiant Armory. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they, uh, they were willing to make me my sword. And it is, it is a, it's like a almost six foot on the dot, maybe a little more, Six foot long, fifteenth century greatsword, and wow. it is like one of my favorite possessions, absolutely ever. I, I, <laughs> I, I take that thing with me everywhere I can. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes well, I'm, I mean, I would. Yeah. Sometimes I straight up walk my dog around the neighborhood. <laughs> like, <laughs> wearing, <laughs> yeah, wearing it on my back because I can. <laughs> because You're probably one of the only people that could probably carry it. Like, yeah, you're trying I was to like say. pick it up. I'd be like, uh-uh. you know, that thing's so, taller than me. <laughs> yes. No, it is definitely. 
Uh, fun fact, swords are not heavy. Really? Yeah. Big swords are not heavy. I mean, oh. you're talking, you know, five pounds as a heavy sword. That's a heavy sword. Okay. Really? Yeah. Mind okay. blown. Yeah. That is, right. I did not know you that. You would not think a six foot chunk of sharp steel would be that light. You'd mm. think, you know, 10, 50, everybody has these kind of romanticized like swords are really crazy heavy and they're not. I can, I can almost wield it one handed. Now, granted, <laughs> that has a lot to do with grip strength right <laughs> but you know that just goes it's not that heavy because if it was i'm i mean i'm not wielding that thing one-handed uh -huh. if it's as heavy as you would think uh yeah like long swords the typical long sword which is you know blade three three to three and a half ish feet mm -hmm. long three pounds you know wow. i'm just like imagining like you like out for a walk with your dog because you have yeah. you have a dog right what's mm -hmm. your dog's name again waylon waylon yes mm -hmm. a lab yep black yeah lab. yeah I'm just imagining you like walking down <laughs> the street with Waylon, just like do 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 do, with a giant yeah. on uh, your back. I, I have gotten some odd looks from neighbors. Right? Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I'm I'm happy for you, man. Yeah, <laughs> like that's I, really cool. They, they've kind of accepted me for what I am. They <laughs> they, they get it. Because like there's a little amateur blacksmithing. If that's yep, it, even that's a, a hobby. thing, yeah, right. Yep. And that's another mm -hmm. another 15th century <laughs> art form that you're bringing back a little yeah. bit. So yeah. something like that. I just. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I really valuable, um, like, usable like usable trade skills. Sure, like right. smithing, you know, uh, carpentry, things like that. And it's, you know, it's not as, net it, as in demand as it once was. Obviously, because right. with you know the advancement of electronics and machines. But I think there's a lot to be said for you know a craftsman that can take a scrap chunk of steel and turn it into something beautiful and usable. Mm. You know, and it's the. It's partly the prepper in me, you know. If the mm. world goes all to hell, you know, <laughs> being able, you'll being, be ready. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. being uh -huh. able to make tools, essentially tools and weapons and stuff, could be pretty handy. Yeah. And you know, honestly, it's just fun. Like I think it's cool to be able to make a knife out of you know an old lawnmower blade or an old <laughs> saw blade. You know. Those are things. I feel like he's definitely speaking I from experience. Like, yeah. I might have to call somebody to fix a sprinkler head at this point. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, in, in doing the homework for this interview. Mm -hmm. um, You've really lived, man. <laughs> <laughs> lived I appreciate quite a life. that. The, I try. I, you know, and, and I think, you know, growing up, where you grew up, what mm -hmm. you went through in high school, mm -hmm. you know, um, and ev everything to get to kind of where you are now. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did that shape you, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, maybe the broadest way that I could, you know, possibly mm -hmm. ask it? You know, honestly, uh, as, as difficult as some of that stuff was, and, you know, it, it was um, – exacerbated by you know being a teenager you know it was all sure, it was right. it was uh you know it all seemed so much worse just because as a teenager you don't you don't have any concept of the real world mm -hmm. or you know what it entails you just know that you can't do the stuff you want to do and that sucks mm -hmm. you know um but what it really gave me was perspective like i have i, th I think i have a very good perspective of the world and life in general and people and i think that serves me well i think it's made me very good at you know taking people for what they are mm -hmm. you know not expecting them to be things that they're not and just moving on it, it i think it's made it easier for me to be happy because i i understand better i think i have a good enough perspective that i can just take things as they come as uh, as somebody who's was a first round draft pick and a professional football player do you have an appreciation I'm getting all deep now <laughs> for, for, for where you are now, knowing that you've been down on your luck, you, you know, your mm -hmm. dad's lost his job. You've lived in an RV. You, you've done some of these things. You've transferred schools as mm -hmm. a kid yeah. to new areas. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you feel like you have a greater appreciation for maybe where you are now um, oh, because absolutely. of all those things? Absolutely. And that's, that, you know, that's the whole perspective thing is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's why I'm, I'm getting better. I'm not as much of a tight wad. I used to be terrible. When I first <laughs> yeah. got here. Dude, going going to the store to buy good food was the craziest thing. And it's not like, you know, when my parents always did the very best they could. And, you know, very rarely did we not have, you know, good food of some kind mm -hmm. or, you know, something to eat or anything like that. But being able to go into a store and buy the type of milk you want, you know, the cuts mm -hmm. of steak. You know, things like that, things that, you know, you just don't go do when you're a struggling college student or a high schooler, you know, it's, it, it was really weird to get used to being able to, you know, within reason, kind of 
do what I want, mm -hmm. you know, and learning to manage because that was a whole other journey is learning to manage that and grow a little bit and let myself have some extra fun, you mm -hmm. know, and learn that that's it's OK, you know, to that's that's what working so hard for so long to get here and then working so hard, even harder to stay. Right. right. That's what makes it worth it, you know, is that you can do these things and it's okay now mm -hmm. like that's it you have mm -hmm. put yourself in a position that allows you to do these things i think that's fantastic i mean and i w we were looking back over a few things and you even said i think at one point i can't remember exactly when you said this but you you made the comment like never thought football would be the career that i pursued <laughs> like never thought that this was the way that my life was going to go and for you i mean when you think about that mindset when did that change for you that this was like mm -hmm. you know football can set me up to have the life that I want you know I, it didn't really sink in until like towards the end of college mm -hmm. I guess that mm -hmm. I had a that I had a real shot at this because you know every little boy's dream is to go to the NFL but you know very few of us really it, it's it's not as tangible you know it's right. a, it's a dream it's like this far off thing mm -hmm. and when I was a when I was when I was a kid, I think what, seventh grade, I think, mm -hmm. you know, I began to like I I felt like I was good at football. I I began to realize that I was good, and I was just you know, I just played it because it was fun. It was right. a blast. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. like like I played football and basketball to my heart's content. I loved them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I felt like I was really really good at football, and I told my dad that I was gonna pay for my own college one day. Mm -hmm. But that was as close as I'd gotten, and after that, really, like after that moment the idea kind of like fell into the background and I just, and I went back to just playing football for a while. Yeah. And then in high school, you know, all of a sudden I go to, uh, uh a couple of camps, uh, at colleges and I start getting offers and it just kind of explodes from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, fast forward a couple of years to college and I'm, I'm actually sitting in my apartment in Seattle at dinner one night and it just kind of hits me. I, I might I can do this yeah. <laughs> you know I, like I this have, is a reality yeah, yeah I I might have a real chance here at being able to get somewhere that not just changes my life but my whole family's like this could th this could really turn into something for me because mm -hmm. my goal was just to get to college in high school mm -hmm. you know get to college get an education you know learn continue to learn do you know continue to expand my horizons mm -hmm. I I didn't expect at all for it to turn into what it has and you know when i realized that it could i i got so excited yeah mm -hmm. like it, it was it was a really cool moment i love it i feel like so empowered right now <laughs> <laughs> and we're learning about knives so and swords. <laughs> yeah, you played some tight end in high school i did i, I did. just like to imagine wow. like yeah. a 5 10 175 pound safety being like what am i supposed to do with this guy <laughs> <laughs> i was a um uh, I was a very standard, large tight end, uh -huh. and you know, I, in the sense that I didn't have any juke moves. I wasn't. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I wasn't. You, you know, weren't like Kyle out no, there. No, no, I'm not. I wasn't a Kyle Pitts. I was <laughs> exactly what you would think. I, I could catch the ball pretty well, and I could run people over. Yeah. Nice. I had I had a kid jump on my back once, and I actually scored a touchdown after running over his teammate <laughs> with him on my back. Is that there a was, video of this somewhere? Oh, I have no idea. Oh it gosh, was it, it was a long time ago. I would have I would pay money to see that. That's I, hilarious. Uh, I remember uh, a passing camp we were doing. I think in my junior year, I was still learning. We hadn't started the season yet. I was mm -hmm. still really learning the position, and uh, we were in a seven on seven scrum, and uh, I was on a, I was on a ten yard dig. And I accidentally ran over the other team's middle linebacker. Who was trying to cover me. <laughs> I did. I like. See him. I, I just did. There's no point in looking at him, so I, I go to make my cut. Well, it's not really cut. It's more of a rounded. Uh, there's yeah. no cut to it. Yeah, like let's, I was six seven. There's, there's no real cutting. Uh, so I go to round off my route, and uh, you know I see him in my peripherals, but I'm not going to deviate from my route. I keep watching my quarterback. 
and I feel myself <laughs> step on his cleat on his foot uh-huh. and then I step on something else <laughs> squishier and I just keep going and that and was his stomach <laughs> yeah that, that was his that was actually his stomach I had pinned his foot he had tripped and fallen and I just I just mowed the poor kid down oh uh, my gosh and, which, and then my quarterback threw me the ball and I scored it was great <laughs> it was worth it but I, I I didn't understand why the coaches were all laughing so hard till I looked back and he was on the ground. Oh my gosh! If if he was if okay for the record, he was yeah. <laughs> noted. Maybe not his pride, but if you're listening to this or watching this, send video to Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, I'd love care. to see <laughs> where <laughs> this guy is now. Yeah, I don't care if it's on VHS. We'll find a way to make it work. <laughs> Back in the day, uh, this is as close to a, a football question as I'm going to get to before we go to our kind of rapid fire mm-hmm. segment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you pitched Arthur Smith on a big guy touchdown play? I know you. I don't I, think you're not going to say if it's in the package or not. But have you had the conversation? Uh, not Coach Smith. I've I've kind of badgered our line coach about it uh, <laughs> because you know there's over the years there's been a lot of love to uh, the, to left tackles and stuff. But that's you know, true. You know, it you is know, always yeah, left tackles. There's always love to the left tackles, but you never see a little. You never see a gimme to the to the guys on the rights. <laughs> I I don't think it's happening anytime soon. But you know I I have hope. I have hope. <laughs> One day, maybe. One day. <laughs> run over. It, it, I it might you, be harder to run over the middle linebacker this it, time. It, yeah. it <laughs> might be. It might yeah. be. You know, considering it's pro football. And everything, <laughs> I'm not nearly as fast compared to everybody else now. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, there's that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait. What, one more from me, and then we'll get into rapid fire. I promise. Um, <laughs> but recently read a story from our good friend Josh Kendall, who works for The Athletic, about you were talking about, you know, one day – far from now when you retire oh, from right. football, oh, forget football that you want to live off the grid oh <laughs> and i want to know what that means for you because scott and i were talking we're like off the grid for us is like oh i don't take my cell phone with me to the grocery store like, <laughs> but i feel like your definition of off the grid is very different so what does that entail for you it it is a little different uh, <laughs> just a wee bit. <laughs> you know i just i really i've always been in love with you know the the western frontier quote unquote you know like i grew up reading just rabidly louis lamore books and zane gray and book you know books about you know the old days trappers cowboys mountain men all the above and i have always kind of wanted to have my own little homestead and yeah that's that's really what i was talking about is Mm -hmm. i'd love you know one day to have my own little place up in the mountains you know where it's quiet and just kind of have have my garden have my animals in my barn and stuff and just kind of be able to do what i do I you know that that, that kind of thing so chill i love it now oh. it's time for now it's time to rapid not be fire chill. so oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. We, we don't have any sound effects we don't I, we <laughs> just do our own sound effects. um so we end every single episode doing a rapid fire game mm-hmm. um so are you ready hit me okay first Mm-mm. question your favorite play as a Falcon? For any wide zone to my side. <laughs> <laughs> any single one. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'll strike that. Any run play to my there side. You go. Okay. Any run play to my side. <laughs> so when they ran 14 consecutive times, a lot of times to the right. Uh, very Cleveland, happy. You, you, were, you were very happy. Very happy. Um, <laughs> normally, this next question is about, it's about music, but since I've heard you say that your life is like a country song, I've heard you say that <laughs> sometimes. Uh-huh. If we, and we're not going to make you sing now. <laughs> there, there well, is a microphone. Everybody that's <laughs> listening, thanks you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but is there a country song that you would be willing to do at karaoke if you'd had maybe mm. like the right amount of Coors Lights or something? I'm not sure. Boy, that's that's hard. Like I, <laughs> I'm a real sucker for like old country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All uh, right. I think the song uh, Luke and Bach, Texas by – Waylon Jennings is That'd be fa- up there. I would suck at it, but that is that is <laughs> one of my favorite songs. Is that who your dog's named after? Yep, Waylon Jennings. Wow. Look at that. Oh, yep. full circle. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one, favorite restaurant ever. Ooh. Oh god. Which that's is hard. very difficult. Okay, so also originally the question was gonna be like, what's your favorite like game to eat that you mm-hmm. hunt or, and kill? Mm-hmm. Or like yes, like something that mm-hmm. you have hunted and yeah. then prepared. Honestly, bear. But- Really? Okay. I, dude, I love I love bear meat, especially if you get one out of a berry patch or berry fields, mm-hmm. which is since you can't bait them in Washington, that's how you know that's your best odds. If you find a great big berry patch somewhere, you know, and just sit on it, there's a good chance a bear is going to come through. Those are always the best tasting. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're it's nice and sweet. It is crazy. You would be very surprised at how good bear meat can be. Takes note. 
Eat bear, not very fetch. Well, okay. <laughs> Scott Bear can't. You can't. Yeah, no, that's God your bear. brother. <laughs> so that's uh, not the, okay, so that's not favorite restaurant, but yeah. Bear from yeah. Berry Patch. Okay. I, th- I think that's a good. I like yeah, that um, more than I like favorite restaurant. Um, who's the falcon you hang out the most with? Definitely, definitely Chris. Definitely Lindstrom, the right guard. Mm. That really fits out well. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. You guys work together yeah. every day, basically. Work together, came in I mean, together. That's we'll, true. We we'll literally see each other every single day. <laughs> <laughs> every snap. Yeah, directly every day. next to Have each other. Have you taken him hunting with you? Not yet. Not yet. I'd like to one day. Yeah, but yeah. We'll see. If, if he wants to, that'd be cool. Right, yeah. Because he's a Boston College guy. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how much hunting he's done. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't think much. <laughs> I don't think much. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see him, though. I'd love to see him out hunting. That'd be funny. That'd be good. Now, <coughs> last one. Um, what is your pet peeve? Your biggest pet peeve? Mm, pet peeve. Mm. This one trips up people. But honestly, mm-hmm. when you walk into the bathroom and somebody has on the toilet seat and not cleaned it up. Ugh. Uncool, I, man. I, I, it's, I hate that. What are we, 12? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I yeah, I get it. Everybody misses. Whatever. <laughs> Clean up. You're not a child. I, I it's hate not that. that. No, it's not. It's an extra five seconds. And that's so. Di- it's. It takes so little effort to look so much less disgusting. I. I hate that. I. I hate that so much. And on that note, Caleb. <laughs> I, I like. I was gonna have some like oh. fancy conclusion. Nope. No, that's it, that's Clean up one. after yourselves. Gosh darn God. it. Thank you guys for joining Falcons Final Whistle. I'm Scott. That's Tori. This is Caleb. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll talk to you next week.